Hello, my name is Brian. I'm a designated mechanic examiner or DME. I'm creating this video to help applicants fill out their form 8610-2, which is the airman certificate and or rating application. So this is normally for first time applicants who are testing for either airframe and or power plant. They're a graduate from an AMTS school or civil or military experience. What I want to point out is a few things about this form that new applicants don't typically notice at first, and that's that there are instructions provided with the form. The old version of this form didn't have any instructions, not directly with it. It was in another supplemental packet and was hard to find, and most applicants didn't know about it either. In this form, when you download it through the FAA, through FAA.gov, uh, you'll notice that it comes with seven pages. It's only the last two pages that are the form itself. The application form is pages six and seven. The supplemental information is pages one through five or Roman numerally here on the page that you see on the screen before us, pages I through V. Of those first five pages of supplemental information, it's really the last two that give us the ins instructions we need for completing the FA form 8610-2. I would encourage you to read through everything. It's all important. There's really not all that much. Um, so read through. There's some information here, like when printing, print pages six and seven, print double-sided, detach the supplemental information. Your DME does not need the supplemental information. Your DME only needs the last two pages or the form application form itself. Let me scroll down to what that form looks like. The last two pages starts here. Airman Certificate and or Rating Application. That's the form itself. That's the part that you need to turn into your DME. The other five pages are for your information only. If we scroll back up to pages uh, Roman numeral four here. We'll see that there is some information for completing the form. There's a top section, applicant information. If we get to the second page here, we go to application basis and everything is numbered and lettered. Those numbers and letters correspond to the form itself. The top section is here. You've got some boxes to check, such as uh, original issuance, added rating, mechanic, airframe, power plant, or parachute rigor, if that applies to you. I'm only dealing with the mechanic side of it in this video. Original issuance, if you're a new applicant, added rating, if you've already got a rating, such as airframe or power plant, and you're adding to it. Other, if you're making a change, the supplemental information explains which box you should check. So go back and read the supplemental information. Mechanic, airframe, or power plant, or both if you're testing for both. Applicant information, last, first, and middle, separated by commas. Again, the supplemental information explains exactly how that should be done. Date of birth. So basically boxes A through N. If you're confused on what you should put in the box, go back to the supplemental information located on the previous two pages, and double check. It should have everything you need to know on there. Box J2 is one that I often see incorrectly done. Uh, it's your mailing address, if that's different than your physical location. For most people, those are going to be the same. And for most people, when it's the same, you simply check the box and leave the rest blank. If it's the same address, you don't need to put it on there again. I'm not saying that the FAA would kick it back, but they could, because the instructions aren't really clear on that one, but it does say that you must fill in J1. But J2, if it's the same, I would just leave that blank. Boxes K through N, answer those appropriately. Don't leave any of those blank. The next section is Section 2, Application Basis. There are three sections there, A, B, and C. For most of you, it's going to be Section C that you're going to check if you're an AMTS graduate. AMTS stands for Aircraft Maintenance Technical School or Aircraft Maintenance Technician School. So the AMTS, that's a Part 147 school. If you're a applicant using civil or military experience, you would check the boxes appropriately. Make sure you've reached out to a DME uh, if you are applying based on civil and or military experience, just to make sure there's some different paperwork that's required. You want to make sure your DME is comfortable with everything and that you've got all that paperwork required. For AMTS graduates, which are going to be the majority of the people making application, you're going to click box C and then C1, either AMTS graduate or a 6580 applicant. 
Again, most of you are going to be an AMTS graduate, meaning you've already graduated the course, either airframe or power plant. If you're testing early, you're allowed under provision part 65.80, 6580 as we often call it. That's an early test. Uh, you'd want to talk to your DME. Uh, there's some hoops you have to jump through in order to test early. It's not always recommended for every applicant. Most applicants aren't going to go this route. Most of you are going to have already graduated from this, uh, the course. Boxes C2, C3, and C4. Again, these are noted in the supplemental information above, but your certificate number, name, and AMTS location, I should say the AMTS certificate number, name, and location, that's your school. That should be on your graduation certificate, sometimes called your gold seal certificate. Uh, it's normally an embossed graduation certificate. If you graduated and you're making application, you've graduated from either airframe and or power plant or both. The vast majority of the schools that I'm aware of issue an airframe certificate of graduation and a power plant. They don't combine them together. There are a few schools that do, but those are the exception, not the rule. So again, box C5 is a box I often see mistakenly entered you might have graduated and you're you graduated the entire AMP program at your school so you think you have an airframe and power plant graduation certificate most likely you don't most likely you have an airframe graduation certificate and then a separate power plant graduation certificate so if you are the exception and your graduation certificate is just one and it has both airframe and power plant then you would check this box otherwise you're going to select either one that you're testing for whichever applies Graduation date will be on that certificate. Boxes C7, C8, and C9 are specific to those applicants who are making a 6580 early test. Parachute rigor, of course, would not apply to us. Box or section C, or I'm sorry, section three here, record of experience. This is only going to be for those applicants who have civil and or military experience. So if you're an AMT S graduate, then you're not going to put anything in there under record of experience. So that brings us to the final section here, which is section four, applicant certification. This is you certifying that the form is correct. That's what that means. Um, sometimes the same words are used in a different context. So applicant certification, that means I certify everything in this form is correct as to the best of your knowledge and understanding. I would recommend that you print your name here in this box, leave enough room for you to sign it, and then date it with the standard eight-digit format. And that's about it as far as the form is concerned. There is a second page, but the second page is normally used by the DME on the day of the test. If you're printing off two separate pages, you might want to also, if well, technically you're required to go ahead and put fill out this top line if you're printing two separate pages. Ideally, though, you're going to send a digital copy of this to your DME. If you print this off by hand, it's totally acceptable to do that. The problem is if you make a mistake along the way, you normally have to start over again, and it just takes more time. It's ideal if you can fill this out digitally using a standard uh, PDF viewer or even the most of modern browsers these days have a PDF viewer already built in. So fill it out um, digitally. If you make mistakes, it's a lot easier to, miss, to correct. Strike throughs um, are not ideal on this form. Uh, they take away space and just create some confusion on there. So ideally we wanna have no mistakes. We can't use white out or anything like that. So digital is best. Before you submit the form, you are supposed to sign it before you give it to your DME. Um, make sure you contact your DME. You may have to print it, sign it, scan it, and then resubmit it that way. Your DME may request, as I often do, that you go ahead and send me a workable digital copy that, doesn't, that isn't signed along with a signed copy. Seems like duplicate, but if we have an error on the day of the test, your DME has to fill in the rest of page two or the second page, which technically is page seven on here. And if the form is still open and editable, then they can go in and, and fill out that second page for you. It makes it a lot easier. You don't need to put anything in the remarks. Uh, your DME will take care of that and the applicant ID. 
there are instructions on the second page in dealing with what can be put in the remarks. Your DME normally handles that though. Uh, and that should be it. So you should be filling out everything starting with the, the top of the page all the way down to box uh, or section four here, applicant certification. And the rest will be up to your DME. Hope that helps explain a few things. Again, go back and look at the supplemental information. It's handy to have that on a separate screen or print it out the first five pages, specifically pages four and five, so that you can look at that supplemental information while you're filling out the form and go back and forth uh, and reference that way. If there's a box and you're not sure what to put in it, each box is labeled with a letter and a number under its particular section. So you can go back to the supplemental information if you're still not sure what you're supposed to put in there, leave that blank, contact your DME. Your DME is going to look everything over before they submit it, but DMEs, uh, we are all human and we might miss something. And any sort of omission or incorrect information that's on the form is only going to cause a delay in the application process. It's, it delays you, it's bad for your DME, it's bad for everybody involved. So we would like to avoid all that read the supplemental information, take a little bit of time, plan on this spending, spending about 30 minutes to fill out this form. Make sure you've got all your certificates, graduation certificate, your certified test results, all of that you've got in front of you, ready to go, ID, all that kind of stuff when you're filling out this form. And do contact a DME prior to filling out this form. Make sure there's somebody in your area and they'll explain any of those. Oftentimes they've got a packet of information that they're going to send you. So I hope that helps you getting started filling out the form FAA 8610-2.